Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions today with Pastor Sutton. Glad you're here with us on this Thursday, January 5th, the day, 12th day of Christmas. I've got it now. Today is the 12th day. Um, You start counting on December 25th, and today would be 12 days, the 5th of of January. Um, Tonight, the traditional celebration on the eve of 12th of the 12th day is the 12th night. Um, Shakespeare wrote a play based on this uh, about some twins uh, that were separated in a, in a shipwreck um, based on, actually the play has some, some basis in a Greek uh, tragedy. Um, in, in, uh, colo- in, in pre-colonial times, um, the tradition was, and, and it's the Council of Trent who set this, um, but it was, you would, you would have a party, uh, you would take down the Christmas tree. Um, the, you would have a, uh, what do they call it? A king cake, a king cake, um, which, uh, when I looked at it, it looks kind of like, a, a a breadish cake with sweets on top. Um, and buried in that cake, uh, would be a bean and a pea. And the man who finds the bean would be king for the night, and the woman who finds the pea would be pea for a night, which later became, um, which which later became instead of a bean and a pea, uh, which are the traditional items, a, a plastic baby Jesus, a plastic a, a plastic baby would be baked into the cake, and then whoever found the plastic baby would uh, be responsible for the, uh, or would be the king for the day. Um, later. Later in the king cakes would became something that was brought to the workplace, and whoever found the baby was responsible for bringing a, a king cake to the next function requiring um, celebrations at the workplace. So that's different. Um, in in colonial America, uh, in the colonial United States, Twelfth Night was celebrated by taking down the Christmas tree, of course. Um, Usually there was a wreath hung on the house with with edibles of some kind. Uh, Those would be consumed on the 12th night along with having a banquet of some kind. Um, The Christmas tree was taken down and again in the colonial times, fruit uh, was considered hard to get and considered a a good gift. And so um, fruit was used to decorate the tree, uh, the tree usually being put up on Christmas Eve um, and taken down on on um, uh, on Twelfth Night, and so the fruit would be consumed by uh, by your friends and guests at your party on the Twelfth Night. Um, in some in some countries, Twelfth uh, Night and Epiphany mark the beginning of the Mardi Gras car- or the beginning of the Carnival uh, season, which lasts then up until Mardi Gras, which I believe takes place on. I believe Mardi Gras hits Shrove Tuesday, the day before before Lent begins, the day before Ash Wednesday. Um, there's uh, there's a lot of other traditions around it too. Um, uh, let's see, and and in, in, in 567, the Council of Tours proclaimed the entire period between Christmas and Epiphany is considered part of a celebration, creating what was known as the Twelve Days of Christmas. Uh, or in English, we call it Christmas Tide. On the last of the 12 days called Twelfth Night, various cultures developed a wide range of additional festivities. And the variation extends even to the issue of how to count the days, whether you start counting on the 26th and Epiphany is the last day. But but I would, I would suggest uh, that the, the most traditional is to count uh, up until uh, Epiphany Eve, which would be Twelfth Night tonight. Um, and then you have a uh, a celebration. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So Twelfth Night refers to the ep- eve of the Epiphany before the wise men uh, arrive at at uh, the side of Jesus's throne of Jesus's uh, cradle or, or in the presence of. Well, they come to worship him. So today. Uh, the twelfth day of Christmas, twelfth night tonight. So call up some friends, have a party, bake a cake, have some fun. There's a lot of other information on it too out there, but 
Um, oh, what's this? Oh, yeah, in Ireland, it's still a tradition to place the statues of the three kings in the crib on the 12th night uh, or the latest, at, at the latest the following day, uh, also known as a little Christmas citation required for that. That's not a thing, but um, also the chalking of the doors. I don't understand that. I don't know about the chalking of the doors. There's a, there was an image of it here, but, um, and I don't know what you write on the doors. Um, uh, Christmas wreath left on front doors. Where was the chalking of the doors? Um, oh, here, chalking the door. Uh, on the 12th night, uh, 12th day of Christmas time, in the eve of the Epiphany, um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, write on their doors with, or lintels, with chalk in a pattern such as 20 cross plus C, or 20 cross C cross M cross B cross 23. The numbers in this example reflect the year 23. The crosses uh, and the crosses to Christ. The letter C, M, and B stand for the traditional names of the Magi. Well, okay, but there aren't, we'll talk about the Magi tomorrow, but there aren't three, necessarily three Magi. Um, um, or alternatively, the Latin blessing. Christus men menshonium benedat a ben benedicat benedicat may christ bless this house uh, so tonight you should run around with chalk to all your friends houses and write 20 and make a cross and a c and make a cross and put an m make a cross put a b make a cross and put 23 on it and then that way you'll uh, bestow a blessing upon your your friends homes for the coming coming year <clears throat> anyway Good morning. Let's see who's here with us. Twelfth, here. Who's with us here on the twelfth day of Christmas? Let me refresh here just to make sure that I maybe don't miss anybody. Geraldine and Neil. Good morning to you guys. Jerry. Good morning. Overcast and flurries. Okay. Uh, Michael. Good morning. Oh, you got thunderstorms down there. I'd like a thunderstorm right now. That would be nice. Kathy. Okay. Fine. Your your British roots, which I don't think you have, would lead you to um, make today the eleventh day, um, because in the Anglican Church they counted uh, the twenty sixth through the sixth. Um, so today would be the eleventh. In the German traditions, as you said, in German traditions, uh, in Scandinavian too, by the way, um, you counted from the twenty fifth to the to the 6th. So you may be on the 11th, but it's 12th night for me. Good morning, Kathy. Uh, Renee, good morning to you. Boy, is that everybody? Can't believe that's all that have piped in yet. Uh, let me refresh again here and just make sure this is frustrating as a, as I'll get. There we go. Uh, yeah, because here's Bonnie, 26 and frosty. Yep, that's right. It's cold and snowy and gray. Deb and Grant, good morning to you guys uh, and Anne as well. Let's go ahead and, and get down to the brass tacks here, I guess. It's time to do that stuff. If you have the Lutheran Service Book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, I have my treasury of daily prayer right here. As we do each morning. Where am I? Okay, yeah. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Or coffee. Our psalm today. Psalm 37. Right? Yeah, 37 verses 34 to 40. Psalm 37. Wait for the Lord and keep his way, and he will exalt you to inherit the land. You will look on when the wicked are cut off. I have seen a wicked, ruthless man spreading himself like a green laurel tree, but he passed away, and behold, he was no more. Though I sought him, he could not be found. Mark the blameless, and behold, the upright. 
for there is a future for the man of peace. But transgressors shall be altogether destroyed. The future of the wicked shall be cut off. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their stronghold in the time of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, that just kind of says it, doesn't it? Wait for the Lord and keep his way, and he will exalt you to inherit the land. Blessed are the poor, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. I've seen a wicked, ruthless man, but he passed away and he was no more. I could not find him. Mark the blameless and behold the upright. They have a future, but the transgressor is altogether destroyed. The future of the wicked shall be cut off. That, that just said it, right? Those outside of Christ, living by their own will and their own reason, by, by human will and human uh, uh, hopes and desires, there is no hope, no future. But those in Christ, there is a future for God, for the Lord delivers them uh, from the wicked ones, saves their lives because their refuge is not found in themselves, but in him. That's just kind of clear. It just kind of says what it is. Hmm. Let's go on. Isaiah 65. Isaiah chapter 65, verses 8 through 25. So we're picking up again where we left off yesterday in the midst of a section that the ESV titles Judgment and Salvation, um, but, but starting on a new thought. And so, um, yeah, and so we're going to be looking here at, at God's promises again. Uh, so 65, Isaiah 65, beginning at verse 8. I don't have a space in there. Thus says the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and they say, do not destroy it, for there is a blessing in it. So I will do for my servants' sake, and not destroy them all. I will bring forth offspring from Jacob, and from Judah, possessors of my mountains. My chosen shall possess it, and my servants shall dwell there. Sharon shall become a pasture for flocks, and the valley of Accor a place for herds to lie down. For my people who have sought me, uh, a place for the for the herds to lie down for my people who have sought me. But you who forsake the Lord, who forgot my holy mountain, who set a table for fortune and fill cups mixed with wine for destiny, I will destine you to the sword. I will destine you to the sword and all of you shall bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, you did not answer. When I spoke, you did not listen. But you did what was evil in my eyes and chose what I did not delight in. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, my servants shall eat, but you shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but you shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but you will be put to shame. Behold, my servants shall sing for gladness of heart, but you shall cry out for pain of heart and shall wail for breaking a spirit. You shall leave your name to my chosen for a curse, and the Lord God, the Lord God will put you to death, but his servants he will call by another name, so that he who blesses himself in the land shall bless himself by the God of truth, and he takes an oath in the land shall swear by the God of truth, because the former troubles are forgotten and are hidden from my eyes. Yeah, just bear with me a second here. Um, for behold, I create, create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. 
No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping, nor the cry of distress. No more shall it be, there be in it, an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the young man shall die a hundred years old, and the sinners a hundred years old shall be accursed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall be the days of my people. And my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. And while they are speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. And dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not destroy or hurt in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, I wanted to look. Oh, come on. Don't, don't fight with me here. 65. There. Um, no, that's Exodus. How did you get to Exodus? Fine, I'll do it. 65, verse. Oh, that's why my numlock is off. There we go. Um, I wanted to look at, first of all, what this word uh, destine is. Um, you heard that. I will destine you by the sword. What is that? Hmm. Well, the Hebrews, Manati, uh, divide into parts. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. I will divide you into parts with a sword. I don't know where the English word destine comes from. Um, an English dictionary here. Uh, yeah, I think this is destine. Transitive verb coming from destined to decree beforehand, predetermined. Yeah, it's it's just it's just it's just destiny. It's an old English word for for destiny. Well, just say destiny. Sometimes when they do these English translations, I, I think maybe it's a they were trying to bring the Hebrew translation in better, but I don't think they did it. I mean, fill fill cups of, of of mixed wine for destiny with a capital D, uh, which is the god of fate. And I will destiny. I guess saying destiny you to the sword uh, isn't going to quite because they were. They, it's a in Hebrew. It's kind of a play on words. It's the the god of fate and the fate of the god um, together. So, I, I, um, yeah. So fill cups of mixed wine for the god of fate, destiny. Um, I will not destroy my... Uh, I, I will not destroy them all, my servants. The truth is, whether we like it or not, all mankind is God's servants, right? I mean, he's God. Um, so he won't destroy all the world, is what he's saying here. Um, there will be some reserved. And so I'll bring forth offspring from Jacob, the, the, the house of Jacob, the house of Israel, Jacob's Israel, right? Um, and from Judah, possessors of my mountains, my chosen shall possess it. My servants shall dwell there. So, so he's making a promise to preserve some. Um, and, and he goes on to, the text goes on here to um, talk about places for pasturing flocks. Now, what is significant about the plain of Sharon or Sharon? Um, oh, it's a, it's a damp place. Uh, where is... Uh, 
stinky. Can't find it. Um, that's interesting. You guys have you guys are getting me a little bit on the side here. Um, there's a preaching theme on alcohol here. I don't oh because they're talking about wine. Um, I wanted. Uh, I don't know where the Plain of Sharon Valley of Accor. It's a, it's a, okay. So Sharon is a, is a, as a valley or a place that's damp, and the valley of a core is a place of the king. Um, yeah, that's, it doesn't help us a whole lot here. Um, they're good places to possess. I guess that's the, I mean, the, the land the king wants to possess for himself is going to be a good land. The, the valley where, where there is moisture for crop growing is good. Right, so what he, I guess, what I would have to say to take out of this is that, is that um, my servants shall dwell there. Sharon is a pasture for the flocks. That's where the where the grazing land is good, and and Akor is a place for the herds to lie down. It's it's a good place for the, the king has it as his land, so it's a good place. Um, so let's continue on. Let's not get too hung up on things here. Uh, those who set a table for fortune, right? The god of fate again, the, the god of fortune, a mixed wine for destiny. Um, we don't, we do say good luck to people, but we don't really believe in luck, do we? Um, people can have fortunate events in their lives, don't get me wrong. But what's going on around us is not luck, good luck or bad luck. What goes on around us is the will of God. And either we're in it or we're outside of it. And, and God provides for us in blessing, um, Sometimes his blessing is 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 a, a blessing of of wealth or status. Sometimes his blessing is a blessing of suffering, and and you know we need that's that's kind of difficult to from a from our fallen human nature to understand. But sometimes God allows suffering on our on us for our benefit. Um, because what does it do? Well, it puts us on our knees praying to God and calling upon him or it or you know in the case of uh, Pharaoh and things like that it hardens our heart and turns us away from him um, which just brings more calamity upon us um, and so the Lord is is talking of those who who set the table for mix wine for destiny who set a table for fortune um, they're they're set for destruction because they're their hope. I when I called you didn't answer me. When I spoke you didn't listen, but you did what was evil in my eyes, in God's eyes, and chose what was not a delight to Him. So so the result is, my servants shall eat, but those turned away from God will be hungry. And the servants shall drink. The others will be thirsty. The servants rejoicing, the others put to shame. Uh, servants singing for gladness of heart, while the others are crying in pain and wailing for a breaking spirit. There's no middle ground. Um, there's, there is no hope for the wicked, and there is blessing in life for the faithful. And remember, I've said this before, but remember, the opposite of, of sin and wickedness is faithfulness, not, not being good. It's God who is good. Only God is good, right? Jesus says that when a, when a, when a man comes up to him and says, good teacher, what must I do to inherit uh, eternal life? Christ looks at him and says, why do you call me good? Right? And he's answering according to his form as, as a human being, as, as, as man, the son of man. Of course, as the son of God, he's divine and is good. Um, but that's not what the man sees because he calls him teacher, not Lord. Uh, the man sees a man and, and he says, good teacher, what must I do? And so Jesus says, why do you call me good? If you do not see me as the one who reveals to you the Father, then why are you calling me good? There is no one good except God. But what God does is take away our sin in Christ. 
By his blood shed upon the cross, he gives us life eternal. And he takes away our takes away our sin, which is done not by our will, but by faith in him. And that faith makes us good. And so the opposite of wickedness and sin is faith. And, and the opposite of faith would be faithlessness or lawlessness. Um, and that would be that which is not delightful in the eyes of the Lord. So there's no middle ground. Either you are in faith towards Christ Jesus and therefore in Christ Jesus, or you're not. There's no middle ground. And that's what he's saying here. My servants shall eat, the wicked will not. They will go hungry. My servants shall drink, the wicked will be thirsty. My servants shall rejoice, the wicked will go to shame. Right? And that's what we see in the in, in the sorting of the, on the last day, the sorting of the sheep and the goats, right? Some will go uh, to my right hand to the joys of the eternal kingdom of my father and some to eternal shame and suffering. On the last day, all mankind will be raised. Some to glory in Christ and some to eternal shame and suffering. There isn't anything in the middle like, well... I don't know where you're at exactly. Why don't you work here as a civil servant and we'll see where you go from there? Or why don't you sit here and, and pray for a while and, and maybe after your prayers have been uh, have been sufficient, God will bring you into, into heaven, purgatory. Uh, no, not no. Heaven or hell. On the last day, and it's not even the last day, it's your last day. When you breathe your last, you are either with Christ awaiting the resurrection or you are in the place awaiting, a, a, again, a glorified and perfect body, just as everyone will have, but one that will be committed to eternal suffering and death. God says, for behold, I create a new heaven and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. Right? When, when we worry about what it's going to, okay, so you've got that division. Some yes, some no. And the ones, there are some who say, yeah, but what about the ones that are no? Uh, you know, I'm going to feel bad if, if, if my cousin's nephew's son's brother's sister, who is clearly wicked, hates God and is an atheist, isn't in heaven with me. I'm going to feel bad about that. Wouldn't God feel bad about that? Well, no. And it won't matter to you. Right? The things of this will not be remembered or come to mind. The good things will. But that which is suffering or pain will be taken from us. It won't matter. He dries the tears of every eye. Be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem. God will rejoice in the new Jerusalem. And be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping or crying and distress. No more shall there be an infant who lives but a few days or an old man who does not fill out his days. It's eternal life. This is figurative. This is all poetry, remember. The young man shall die a hundred years old and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. Right? Um, numbers. When numbers are used, we've got to be careful because they're not, especially in this poetic format, in, in the form of Hebrew poetry, it's imagery. 100 years is, is 10, 10 times the fulfillment, right? So 10 is a completion of a cycle. 100 is the completion of another of, of all the cycles. It's eternity. 1,000 a, 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 a is completion of all things, right? So... Is there death in heaven? I don't know. That's what people look at this and go, oh, a guy will die 100 years old, and so there must be death in heaven. No, there can't be because there is no sin, and, and death is a result of sin. A young man shall, uh, 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 just, sorry, um, uh, no more shall there be an infant who lives but a few days. Are there going to be babies in heaven? Well, I, that one I don't know. And that's okay. I don't need to know. What I do need to know, what I do know is that 
in, in the New Jerusalem is the exact opposite of what God had pronounced as a curse upon those in uh, Judea earlier in Isaiah. Earlier in Isaiah, he said, you're going to build houses and you're not going to live in them. You're going to plant vineyards and you're not going to eat from them. But here, you build houses and inhabit them and plant vineyards and eat their fruit. Not, not build and have another inhabit, not grow and have another eat, right? But my chosen, those in Christ Jesus, those in the end of eternity, shall enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. That in calamity, war and suffering and death. For they shall be the offspring of the blessed Lord and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. And dust shall be the serpent's food. That's paradise. That's the Garden of Eden all over again. When God created the heavens and the earth and all that is therein, and when he made all the animals and all the people, he made us not to eat meat and to eat. Uh, consume living things. We ate the plants. He gave us the fruit of the garden to eat, everything except the tree in the middle, right? Um, it's not like that. When, when, when we fell, everything fell, all of creation. Um, and, and the way nutrition and nutritional needs work and the way that the uh, plants provided nutrition changed as well. The plants were sufficient at that time. Now they're not. You need protein. God gave us animals to eat, right? Um, uh, he he uh, said to uh, Peter, "Rise, kill, and eat." Um, we need we need the, the the meat of animals for our sustenance. But but in the new heaven and the new earth, we don't. There is no sin. The wolf and the lamb grazing, grazing, the wolf grazing. Is this imagery? Yeah, because there's more than just a wolf there, right? Think of every animal that exists that that would, uh, out of out of wickedness and out of uh, its fallen nature, it would attack and eat man or any other creature. Now they graze. Um, the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Not the lion shall eat the ox, but the lion shall eat straw like the ox, and dust shall be the serpent's food, which was the curse at the beginning. So the curse for the old wicked foe remains the same. It doesn't change. But for us, sin, death, and hell have been removed. And through Christ Jesus in the new Jerusalem, the new heavens, and the new earth, we live the way that God intended us to at the beginning the way he created us to prior to the fall. We have the gift of new life, not by our will or by our might or by our doing of things, but by the blood of Christ shed for you, which gives you the forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternal life in him. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, what the heck was today? Today wasn't a commemoration. Hang on a second, guys. Bear with me a minute. It's not. It, the, the prayer circles around to John the Baptist. Oh, I know why. Okay, never mind. The the New Testament reading for today was the gospel. It was was um was John the God, John the Baptist. And so the prayer focuses on that. Again, let us pray. Almighty God, through John the Baptist, the forerunner of Christ, you once proclaimed salvation. Now grant that we may know this salvation and serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. 
From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Thursday morning, O oh God, who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over transgression? If my sins were few or insignificant, then your merciful pardon would not be so remarkable. But I know they are many and great. Your law shows me how many my sins are, and the price of the remission, the blood of your holy, only begotten Son, shows me how serious they are. Who else but you, the God of love and compassion, would sacrifice so much for poor, miserable sinners? Yes, the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus, shows the severity of my sin but also the great depth of your love and grace. As surely as he has risen from the dead, I can be certain that the debt I owed was paid in full. As proof that I will stand before you on the last day justified, you have even provided the means of grace, your word and sacraments, comforting my terrified conscience when I begin to fear the eternal condemnation my sins truly deserve. As this new day begins, renew me with your steadfast love, Wipe away my sin according to the promise that you have made to me in my baptism into Christ. Graciously give me newness of life this day, that I may walk before you free of guilt and strive to serve you wholly. For Jesus' sake and in his name I pray. Amen. And uh, again, prayers for vocations on this day. For one, working as a, uh, from home as a parent. Lord God, Heavenly Father, because you have made me your own dear child in Christ, I can come to you as a dear son or daughter, knowing that you hear my prayer. You have given me the gift of children, whom you have also made your own through the waters of baptism. I implore your blessing upon my children and myself, as they, together, we grow in the grace and knowledge of your Son, our Savior. Constantly remind me that caring for my children is a great privilege. Forgive me for the days when I consider it more of a burden than a joy. Remind me that the time I spend nurturing and caring for a precious life is more valuable than anything money can buy. Amidst the daily flurry of activities, never let me neglect prayer and your word, which strengthen and refresh me. Keep me from being distracted by the allure of worldly things that a greater income could provide. Protect me from becoming defensive, bitter, or unkind when someone makes an insensitive comment saying that I don't work. In the same way, prevent me from being judgmental about those who have chosen a different path than mine. Remind me that I neither, I, I, I know neither their circumstances nor their motives. Bring supportive people into my life and use me as an encourager for others in the same situation as myself. Help me be the, re be the reflection of your love to my children so that they also can be a witness to you. Hear my prayer in the precious name of Jesus, my Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask that you grant assurance and comfort through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, to those who suffer in body, mind, or soul, those who have needs of healing from illness or injury, or those to whom death draws near or age causes continued suffering. Strengthen them in the days ahead and provide healing where it is your good and gracious will. Especially this day, we pray for Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, and all who call upon your most holy name. Give them strength where it is needed and assurance and comfort at all times. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end. That all our doings may be preserved from sin 
our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our devotion for this Thursday, the 12th, 12th day of Christmas to a close. God's peace be with you. I got to uh, do a worship service, hold a worship, lead a worship service down at Pinecrest this afternoon in Merrill. Uh, but uh, that leaves me without being able to do my Bible study and things up at Harshaw, so I'm a little saddened by that. But next Thursday will come soon. We'll see you back here tomorrow, Friday morning, January 6th, for the epiphany of our Lord. God's peace be with you.